Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, my name is Mr. Chai. Today we're going to talk about A-level mathematics, uh, pure uh, math component tree or pure math tree here. Right? Stay tuned. Okay, let's look at how to solve this uh, using second uh, second approach, algebraic approach. So using al algebraic approach, uh, we don't really need to uh, concentrate too much on the uh, graph itself. Right? So here we only uh, depend solely on our algebraic uh, manipulation. Okay, now let us uh, look at how to apply these algebraic methods. Uh, okay, I'm going to write that down first. Okay, this is what we are given. Now, uh, this uh, algebraic equations, uh, sorry, this algebraic inequality is true um, if we actually square both sides, right? Now, in order to get rid of the modulus sign, we can actually apply square both sides, right? Now, that would still uh, ensure that uh, the inequality uh, remain the same, right? So, we can do a square both sides. We will have, basically, it looks something like this. Okay, so we are squaring both sides. Now, therefore, you have this. Okay, so there you have it. And then uh, after that, we just need to uh, simplify this. You will get um, what we have here. We have um, 6x and then we have 24 here. All right. Okay, so that's what we have uh, at this point of time. And then after that, we try to uh, factorize this. Okay, let me see whether I can actually factorize this. Um, uh, let me see, 4, 6. Okay, 4, 6 uh, is just nice. So therefore, uh, we will get a, a 6 here. Just let me see whether I uh, got that correct. Mm, this is a 4 here. Okay. Uh, because this is a negative itself, so therefore, um, uh, let me see, uh, I'm supposed to have negative here, so that is not, uh, that's not correct. Okay, so I should be having, let me see, um, uh, okay, 20 cannot, uh, 6, okay, 6 should be fine. Yep, correct. I think I made this uh, upside down. So therefore, what I'm supposed to do is uh, to have it over here. Uh, this one supposed to be 6. Uh, this will be a 4, a plus 4 here. And then that will give me a negative 24. And then uh, I will have a negative 30, negative uh, 26 there. And then there you have it. So from here, uh, now uh, from here, there's another... Um, strategy that we need to perform in the exam to make this analysis complete all right now that is to draw a line graph here right? is to draw a line graph a very simple line graph if you are not interested uh, to actually uh, draw the actual graph all right so from here all we, all we need to do is just uh, label its um, intersection point so the one of the intersection if you um, label all your zeros actually all their roots so one of the roots is negative 0 0.8, the other one is uh, 6 there. All right. Now the next step is to identify the region. You can see that the region that I'm talking about uh, here, uh, there are uh, 1, 2, 3, 3 quadrants or 3 regions here. Um, we are going to test for its sign. It's more like a sign test in this case, uh, where whether it's positive or negative. Uh, when we manage to get a positive, it means that that portion of the graph must be above the x-axis on the Cartesian coordinates. All right? Now, I, I think for me personally, the easiest way to test is this, this re region. So we might as well start from this region here. Uh, we'll let x equal to 0 because uh, there's a 0 in between this region here. Uh, now, when x is equal to 0, uh, definitely you will get a, a negative value. And then uh, you can uh, proceed on to test for this. Uh, definitely, you'll get a plus here. 
Right. Now, once you have uh, obtained the sign, uh, then all we need to do is uh, to look for the sign that says less than zero. Any sign that is less than zero, yes, negative is less than zero. Uh, therefore, we can conclude our solution. So our solutions as uh, x. Oh yeah. By the way, this um, line graph represent x here. Yeah? So the x must be a line between negative zero point eight and uh, six there. Now, I hope that is clear. All right, stay tuned for the second question. Okay, welcome back. Uh, now, we're going to uh, glance through all the uh, pure math trees uh, question. So, this is a, a complete uh, A-level pure math tree paper. Okay, now, first question. Uh, we are given uh, this inequality. Uh, solve the inequality 3x minus 1 uh, less than 2x plus 5. They are all in the... Uh, modulus form here. All right. <clears throat> now, of course, uh, before we start um, exploring, uh, the idea about solving inequality is uh, to identify the region, the region or the domain of x that will satisfy, or the value of x in this case that will satisfy this inequality. All right now, visual-wise, before we get going, uh, we're going to look at the uh, the graph for this. Now, how does the graph look like? Now, mainly the uh, first graph, if you look at the first graph, 3x uh, minus 1. So, 3x minus 1. This is uh, the graph uh, shown in blue color here. So, this is y equal to 3x minus 1 modulus. All right. Whereby, this graph, uh, all orange color, this is 2x plus 5. All right. Okay. So that's how uh, those graphs look like. We are supposed to identify the uh, value of x uh, where this <coughs> this two x plus five graph is greater than the uh, graph three uh, x minus one here. So uh, what does that actually mean? All right. Now that basically means uh, we are looking at um, uh, sections where the orange graph is much more higher than the uh, blue line graph. Right? Now let's check this out. Uh, starting from the left hand side here, uh, you will see that the blue one uh, for any values um, on the left of this uh, x value for instance. Okay, let's assume that it's a negative one. So any region uh, to the left of negative 1 or x is less than negative 1 uh, we notice that the the blue line is far more greater than or higher than the orange line okay so which means 3x uh, minus 1 is actually larger than that uh, that's not what we want what we want is we want the uh, orange line to be higher than the blue line so where could that be All right now you can see that uh, this this is the region where it, if it is uh, greater than negative one, the orange uh, graph, the orange graph will be uh, much higher than the blue graph here. But you do notice that the, there is a possibility that the orange uh, graph, orange uh, straight line, might be intersecting with the uh, blue line graph here, right? Now let me show you uh, whether they actually intersect or not. Okay, uh, that shouldn't be. Uh, problem here you can see that let me simplify that uh, sorry let me zoom in a bit so that we can see what we are looking at okay just let me clean this up here okay just let me uh, zoom in further so that we can see that uh, clear all right now you can see that uh, both of these graphs actually intersect uh, some way here all right now at the line x equal to 2 okay now i might want to show you the region in this case so x is um, negative uh, so let's try to find where do they intersect uh, now of course by using uh, these two here that i have uh, it will be very very easy to identify where they actually intersect okay that will ease my uh, work here okay where is that Okay, so there you have it. So they both uh, intersect some way here. All right. Now we will have the uh, just let me check the coordinates there. So we'll have a, a negative 
zero point eight. Okay, so that is actually uh, just let me plot that negative zero point eight. Okay, and then you have another one x equal to six. Uh, now basically, uh, we are interested to look at the region where the orange uh, graph. So the orange graph. Uh, again, the orange graph is the uh, 2x. So this part, just to clarify one more time, this is uh, 2x plus 5. Uh, this one is actually 3x minus 1. Okay, so we want to find the region where the orange line is uh, far more higher than the blue line. So it, it should be very clear to us that this is the region. The X should be lying. You can see that the X should be lying between here and here. Uh, for us to be able to see that the, the orange graph is much more greater than the blue graph here. Okay. Anywhere else, uh, that will be uh, other conditions. Right? So just by looking at this uh, visual itself, of course in the exam, you have to uh, plot the graph out and then find the uh, intersection. Uh, find their intersection. So here I'm going to show it to you. How do we actually find the intersection A and B first before we uh, finalize the solution? So now, first of all, even though this uh, orange graph is represented as y equal to two uh, x plus five, but it consists of uh, two uh, sections here, sort of a two piecewise function. Uh, now you can see that this uh, y. So if I were to write these uh, functions down. This y can be represented as a piecewise function. Uh, it is 2x plus 5 and then negative 2x minus 5. Uh, if the x is greater than, uh, if the x is greater than negative 2.5 here, uh, whereby if this is uh, less than, uh, less than or equal to uh, negative 2.5. All right. Now, that is the original definitions for the absolute function. Uh, whereby the other uh, graph, okay, the, so the other graph, like in this case, we have 3x minus 1 modulus. Uh, this can be represented as a piecewise function, 3x minus 1 also, and then negative 3x uh, plus 1 also. All right, for any x, okay, any x that is uh, greater than, of course, in this case, it should be greater than 1 over 3, right? And then uh, for any x that is uh, less than uh, 1 over 3, then, right? So that's how we describe, fully describe uh, an absolute function here. Now, knowing that uh, we want to find the intersection for point A and B, right? All we need to do is identify the section, uh, which section we are talking about. Are we uh, actually talking about this section? Uh, or, or this section here. So we, are, we can label that down if you are actually uh, confused on that. So uh, take for instance, two, two x uh, plus five. Two x plus five is actually this, uh, this section. This section is two x plus five. Whereby this uh, graph here, this part is negative two x minus five because it has a negative gradient. Right. Whereas, uh, whereas this section here um, is represented as negative 3x plus 1, uh, and then the other section here is represented as 3x um, minus 1. Okay, so I hope that is uh, clear at this point. So all you need to do is, uh, because we are interested to find the intersections uh, for A in this case, so therefore we're going to choose this equation and this equation, we're going to solve them simultaneously. So we're going to solve uh, negative uh, y equal to negative 3x plus 1 and y equal to uh, 2x plus 5. So basically, we are choosing uh, this one and then solve it with 2x plus 5 there. So from here, uh, we have 3x plus 1 equal to 2x plus 5. And now solving that uh, should not be a problem here. So you get a 5x and then uh, you have a negative 4 there. Uh, therefore, that imply x is equal to negative 0 0.8. So that is our intersections there. Now we are 
uh, not interested to find the Y at this point. Now, if you do uh, interested to find the Y, all you need to do is just substitute this one back to either one of these. Right? That should be fine. Now, the next intersection point will be a B. Okay. Now, all you need to do is to solve um, solve y equal to now if you look at b, b is the intersections between uh, this graph here okay, 2x plus 5 and and y equal to 3x minus 1 so all I need to do is just solve them simultaneously okay, so from here I will get my uh, x is equal to 6 uh, very obvious from here and then once we have done we managed to identify that this is the region where uh, the graph uh, 2x plus 5 is much more greater than the graph, uh, the blue graph. Therefore, uh, the value of x that satisfy this inequality, which is our solutions, uh, will be, uh, will be uh, x must be lying between negative uh, 0.8 and a 6 there. All right. Now, I hope that is clear. How do we solve this uh, visually using uh, graph and a bit of uh, algebra? Okay. Now, next, I'm going to show you how to solve this uh, using algebraic approach solely. Okay. Now, stay tuned. All right. This is our uh, second uh, question. All right. Now, uh, we are given a curve uh, which is defined for uh, theta... Uh, ranging from 0 and pi over 2 um, and then uh, the curve is given by this uh, parametric equation uh, x equal to tangent and uh, y equal to 2 cosine squared theta sine theta right? now since the theta is located in the first quadrant uh, therefore all this value x and y would be uh, positive if I were to plot this graph here it would look something like this Okay, <clears throat> so you can see that there's a maximum point uh, showing here. All right. Now our first question is to uh, show that the uh, gradient, gradient, um, gradient of the tangent uh, to the curve is given by dy dx here, uh, given by this expression. All right. Now first of all, I'm going to show you how we are going to do it uh, using the calculus method and the algebraic approach. Right. <clears throat> uh, first step, uh, we can to obtain the uh, differentiations for uh, x here. So we can differentiate x with respect to uh, theta. Okay, with respect to theta. And then uh, from here, uh, if you can't remember, you can refer to the data booklet. Uh, you should be able to get uh, second, second square. Now the tougher one is, uh, is uh, y, actually. Right. <clears throat> okay, now uh, for me, I think it's easier for us to uh, re-describe this. Maybe mainly in terms of sign, it will be much more easier to work with uh, rather than working with two types of uh, trigonometry ratio here. So we can use uh, one of the identity uh, sine square plus uh, cos square theta equal to one. Okay, so there you have it. So from here, uh, we should be able to get. Uh, y equal to 2 sine theta uh, minus 2 sine here, uh, 2 about 3. Let me check uh, one time if that's correct. Yep, that's correct. Okay, now we are ready to differentiate uh, y with respect to theta. Okay, differentiating this, uh, we will get uh, 2 cosine theta. And then uh, next, can okay, bring down the power here, it will be 6. Uh, copy this expression here, so there will be a sign, and then uh, differentiation is a uh, decrease in index. Now the index will be uh, 2 now, and then finally you have to differentiate uh, the sign, which is a uh, uh, cosine in this case. All right now, that will be our dy d data. All right now, using chain, chain rule, we know that uh, dy dx it can be written as dy d theta uh, by d theta uh, dx here. Yeah. Okay. Or we can rewrite in such a way uh, as dy d theta divided by dx 
D data. I think this is more suitable in our case, uh, since uh, all this form is in DYD data and DXD data. Uh, therefore, our DYDX would be uh, our DYD data will be a uh, two cosine theta minus six sine square theta cosine theta, and then divide that by our uh, DXD data, which is a secant square theta. Yeah. <clears throat> now we know that secant square theta is actually 1 over uh, cosine square. Uh, therefore, uh, we can write this as uh, 2 cosine theta minus 6 sine square theta cosine theta uh, multiplied by cosine square. And then uh, that would typically yield uh, 2 cos um, 3 theta and then uh, I'm answer with uh, 6 sine square theta cosine cube. Now, anyway, uh, we would like to describe everything in a single trigonometry ratio of a cosine, so therefore we're going to apply the same identity here again. Uh, that would be Okay, so there you have it, and then uh, of course by manipulating uh, my by manipulating this uh, algebraically, uh, we will be able to get. Um, now let's see what we have here. Uh, we will have a negative four, of course. All right, you can see that this is actually negative four cosine three theta, and then uh, plus six cosine uh, five theta. Or you can. Uh, rearrange it in the more positive uh, perspective uh, therefore the final answer would look uh, something like this okay let's check whether that's correct yep uh, there you go uh, that will be the proof for the how we obtain the dydx here all right now i hope that's clear okay now uh, next i'm going to show you how that graph uh, can be plotted just for uh, extra knowledge Okay, how this graph is being uh, plotted. Like, are we able to convert the parametric equation into the Cartesian uh, form for the uh, equation of the curve? All right. So let's see. Let me clear everything. Okay. So generally, we have uh, x equal to uh, tangent theta. And then uh, y is equal to 2 cosine squared theta sine theta here. Now our objective here is to form the uh, Cartesian equations that represent the curve. Okay, So we're going to join these two uh, parameters together into um, um, a one uh, Cartesian equation. Right. <clears throat> so we have to make use uh, of some of the trigonometry identity to uh, combine this uh, x and y together. Right. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look at how to uh, work with this. The usual uh, technique usually will be uh, we will start from the y itself, uh, the, the one with the um, larger degree. So you can see that there's a degree of 2 here. So it's always good to start from uh, the larger degree here. Okay, so this, this one here can be written as uh, 2 sine theta over secant squared theta uh, because uh, we, we know that secant square theta is 1 over cosine square theta. All right. <clears throat> okay. And then uh, next, uh, we know that uh, this can also be written as a 1 plus tangent square theta from the uh, one of the identity. 1 plus uh, tangent square theta is equal to uh, secant square theta here. All right. <clears throat> now next, uh, we can try to uh, convert the sine um, into into tangent, of course. All right. So one way to do that is uh, by introducing a cosine on the numerator and denominator. Uh, therefore, we have uh, something like this. Okay. So we can say that we multiply that by uh, secant theta. Okay. So we're going to multiply by secant uh, theta here also. All right. Put that here. 
Okay. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't convert this, but never mind. <coughs> mm. So from here, you will see that the sine multiplied by secant is um, actually the same as um, sine theta multiplied by 1 over cos, which is actually uh, tangent theta. Now, that's the whole uh, purpose of introducing the secant here. Okay, uh, so the top part we can write as 2 tangent theta now. Now, the denominator, uh, secant theta, 1 plus tangent square theta is actually secant square. So, might as well I just write it down as uh, this one here. Okay, so that's how um, it actually look like. And then, okay, and then after that, we can actually um, rewrite this uh, equation solely in, in terms of tangent. So it will be easier to uh, work with in this case. Uh, therefore, I can write this as 2 tangent theta uh, over, okay, so we know that uh, we know that 1 plus tangent square theta is equal to secant square theta. Uh, therefore, from here, the secant theta is actually the 1 plus tangent square uh, square root. Right now, in this case, we only take the positive value uh, because of the domain of the theta itself. Okay, so therefore, uh, this one we can rewrite as uh, 1 plus tangent square. Okay, uh, 3 to the power 2. Right. Now, by describing this in terms of tangent, we can uh, convert that solely to x now. So that will be 2x, uh, 1 plus uh, x squared to the power of 3 over 2. All right. So, therefore, uh, the equation of curve in Cartesian form can be written as 2x, 1 plus x squared. Uh, 3 over 2. So if I were to plot this on my GeoGebra, I would be able to get exactly the same curve here. And then the purpose of obtaining the dy dx is uh, for us to determine the gradient of tensions to the curve at every single point on the curve itself. <clears throat> and then we notice that uh, there's a possibility that the dy dx uh, could reach a value of 0 uh, at the uh, maximum point, at this uh, stationary point. All right. So by assigning this equal to Zero thing, right? <clears throat> okay. Now uh, the other key feature about this graph is, um, as as uh, x uh, prolong um, um, bigger in the in the x value, uh, you will notice that the y eventually will reach zero, uh, which represent the horizontal asymptote. Right now, those are the extra uh, learning informations for you. I hope that is useful. Alright, okay, I'm going to move on to the next questions shortly. Alright, let's take a look at uh, question 3. The polynomial, uh, cubic polynomial, uh, given as 4x cubed plus ax squared plus bx minus 2, uh, where a and b are constants, uh, is denoted by px. It is given that uh, x plus 1 and x plus 2 are factors of px. Uh, therefore, we need to find the uh, values of a and b. Okay. Now, second question. When A and B have these uh, values that you have found, uh, find the remainder when Px is divided by x squared plus 1 here. Now, what does it actually mean by x plus 1 and x plus 2 are the factors of uh, Px there? And then how does the value for A and uh, B actually affect the, uh, the behavior of this polynomial? Right? Now, before we start, I'm going to write down the uh, functions uh, Px equal to 4x cubed plus ax squared plus bx uh, minus 2 here. Now, where a and b are constant, uh, it could be, I assume that these are all uh, real numbers. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, I'm going to show you uh, how the a and b actually would change the behavior of this uh, cubic function. So, take for instance, uh, if the a is getting smaller and smaller, you will see that uh, the shape changes in such a way. Okay. Right? You can see that. A. Whereas, uh, by changing B, okay, changing B, uh, it, it, uh, it affects more uh, mainly on the uh, left-hand side of the uh, curve itself. 
so you can see that it mainly pushes the curve uh, um, or it, it actually stretches uh, the graph uh, vertically so uh, this is some of the behavior um, done by the value for a and b so I'll let you see again so a uh, mainly stretches the uh, polynomial equations in the um, different directions whereby uh, B stretches it in another direction. Now, no matter how you stretch, uh, there will be a, a specific or fixed value of A and B uh, that will produce uh, X plus 1 and X plus 2 as its factor. Uh, geometrically, the factor basically means the uh, root or the x-intercept, uh, negative 1. Right. So, manually, I try to adjust that and see whether we can come up with a uh, a proper value of a and b that will fit in this uh, description here okay let me try it out so maybe i'll try something like this and then try to move this one down here a bit okay something like this and then let me try some more okay maybe i'll try some more here okay then try some more here for instance all right now uh, this is a pretty good fit uh, to the description of the questions there a uh, way this graph actually pass, uh, passes through um, the x-intercept at x equal to negative 2 and x-intercept of x equal to negative 1 and then um, in this case it also passes through the uh, y-intercept at negative 2 and then at the same time it also passes through the x-axis uh, on another uh, value here, which is the positive solution. All right. Okay, now that's how we manipulate it manually uh, with the help of uh, software here. How are we going to uh, work this out algebraically? Okay, let's take a look. Right. <clears throat> so the first step, we're going to use the factor and remainder theorem. Now knowing that x plus 1 is the factor to this, uh, therefore, uh, therefore we can uh, we can conclude that um, x equal to negative 1 um, would yield a remainder equal to 0 here. So all I need to do is just substitute this one into the original equation. And then that should yield a 0 there. All right. Now you can see that because there are two unknowns here, so uh, you would have already uh, expected to solve for a simultaneous equation here. All right. So we have, um, uh, let me see, negative 4 here, negative 6 here. Uh, so therefore, we have a minus b is equal to a 6. That will be our first uh, simultaneous equation. Then by repeating the same procedure for uh, negative 2, so we know that uh, this is also the root of the polynomial equation. Uh, therefore, it will yield a 0 remainder also. And then uh, by substitute this negative 2 into the polynomial equation. That should yield a 0. Right? <clears throat> so let us uh, try to solve this. Um, this is at 32, 34. Right? I think most of the 2 can be cancelled off uh, quite easily. So maybe we will try to reduce all the 2 there. Um, uh, then therefore that will be um, let me see here so if we throw away the 2 uh, we will have um, negative um, 8 so this is a negative 4 negative 16 here negative 16 negative um, negative uh, 17 okay negative 17 there will be a 17 there so 4a oops it's not 4a it's a 2a okay let me change that should be 2a instead of 4a okay so there will be a 2 uh, 2a here okay so 2a and then um, this one will be a negative b and then uh, we have a negative 6 16 negative uh, 17 so 17 is over here all right now i did not check properly but uh, let us uh, try to solve it and then see whether we are able to come up with a value or not right? <coughs> So from here, we're going to solve this simultaneously. Um, the easiest way to do this would be to just take the number 2, subtract off in number 1. Uh, now, therefore, the a 
uh, with U11. Now you can see that from our uh, manual manipulation, it looks uh, like A is supposed to be 11, right? Uh, which is uh, actually the answer, right? <clears throat> so from here, uh, we can substitute this uh, back to either one of these uh, equation. We should yield the value for B um, equal to a 5 here, uh, which is exactly shown uh, here. Now, therefore, uh, we have obtained uh, the equations a equal to 11. Um, sorry, we have uh, already obtained the uh, values for a and b, which is 11 and 5 here. All right. Now, I hope that is clear. <coughs> now, of course, uh, for checking purposes, uh, you can always substitute the a and b back into the original equation and then uh, try to substitute this value back again uh, to check whether the remainder is actually equal to uh, 0. There. All right. Okay, now there's a uh, first section. Now, section number two. Now, knowing that A and B is given by um, 5 and 11. Okay, so 5 and 11. So, A is uh, 11. And then uh, B is a uh, 5. Okay, we're going to use these two values that we have obtained. We need to find the remainder when Px is divided by x squared plus 1. Uh, now, there are many methods uh, that you can try out, but uh, one of the methods that is uh, more comfortable to me is uh, long polynomial division. Okay, so I'm going to just do that. Okay, now of course, uh, so you might be asking, can I actually use synthetic division? Uh, well, you can try, but synthetic divisions does not work for... Uh, uh, order 2 uh, factor. It only work for linear factor instead of quadratic factor. So that's the one of the reasons why I'm using long polynomial division here. All right. So I'm going to uh, try this out. So for x, that will be 3, that will be 4x here. <coughs> Is it 4x? Yeah, 4x here. So therefore I will have 11x squared uh, plus x. And then that would be 11 x squared plus 11 or uh, that will be a uh, x so uh, don't forget here we actually have a 2 here um, so from here we have a uh, x uh, we have a negative 13 yeah so this is negative 13 here right. now because the degree of the uh, last expression here is less than the degree of the uh, uh, divider here so therefore uh, we can say that the remainder, uh, remainder when px is divided by x squared plus 1 is given by uh, x minus 13. All right, now I hope that's clear at this point. All right, now we're going to move on to the next question shortly. All right, question four. Uh, this is a uh, definite integrations. So before we perform the integrations, uh, at, at least we can get a, a visual understanding of uh, what is the uh, the purpose of uh, integrations or performing a definite integration here. All right. Now, first of all, um, I have already plotted uh, this graph here, uh, which is given by uh, this function f theta is equal to theta sine half a theta right now this is the graph um, having uh, I have already uh, set the domain from 0 to pi over 2 all right so this is how the curve actually look like when we perform a definite integration we are basically trying to uh, find out uh, what is the area under this uh, curve here uh, ranging from 0 to uh, pi over 2 now that's the purpose of performing uh, and in uh, and that uh, definite sorry performing a definite integration right to find the area under the uh, graph other than that uh, there are some other purpose of uh, performing integration uh, like in physics uh, or science uh, we may use it to find uh, amount of work done if the work is uh, uh, sorry, if the function is non-linear, for instance, right? Now, let's take a look at how to perform the integrations. 
for this uh, definite integration. Now we know that there are two functions. Uh, it consists of a product of two functions. Now once you identify that that is a product of two functions, uh, you must uh, use, I would say, uh, using the uh, integration by parts would be uh, the, the easy way out. Uh, for exam purpose. Of course, there are some other methods that you can uh, try out here. Right? <clears throat> so using integration by parts, uh, usually we will label uh, u um, that represent the, uh, the functions that you can differentiate easily. That tends to reduce as you differentiate. So in this case, I think theta will be easier uh, to be represented as uh, u because uh, when you differentiate this, uh, that will actually yield a 1. So it has been reduced nicely. Whereby, uh, the second part, dvd theta, uh, should be given by sine theta over 2 here. Right. And then uh, our intention is to actually obtain the v itself by performing an antiderivative. Uh, this is uh, indefinite uh, integration. The purpose is to obtain the function uh, for v in this case. Right? <clears throat> so I hope that you still remember how to integrate this. All right. Now the integrations for this is basically uh, first step is to transform the sine into uh, cosine. So uh, differentiating a sine will you positive sine, uh, positive cosine. But when you integrate the sine, you earn, uh, end up with a negative cosine. So firstly, let's transform it. Uh, secondly, we have to divide by the uh, uh, coefficients of this theta here, which is a half. Now, therefore, that will yield negative 2 cosine theta over 2. All right, now I hope that is clear. Mm -hmm. So, here we don't need to uh, pay attention to the uh, plus c yet because uh, we are not interested in getting the function, but yet we are interested to obtain the uh, <coughs> numerical value that represents the area under the curve. Okay, so let's uh, uh, write down for some of you who are not very familiar with the integration by parts. Uh, the formula for integration by parts will be uh, here. So I'm going to write that down. So if you have u dv d uh, theta d theta here, so it's a product of two functions, and then that will be given by uv minus um, minus the um, <coughs> the v, uh, du d theta, and then d theta integration. So that's the formula for uh, integration by parts that can be found in your MF19 uh, data booklet. So from here, all you need to do is just take the, your, your, the u. So the u is uh, theta. Uh, the v, the v is negative. So going to negative uh, 2 cosine theta over 2. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have. And then uh, after that, we're going to subtract this. Okay. Now I will uh, try to eliminate the uh, sign since this is negative. So it will become a 2 instead. Okay. Uh, differentiations of uh, u with respect to theta is a 1. So therefore, uh, it only turned out to be this. <clears throat> and then uh, after that, we try to simplify that. Okay, if you try to simplify that, uh, it would actually give you a 4 sine theta over 2. Okay, because cosine will turn into sine. Now, anyway, this is uh, just part of the integrations process. What we are interested to find is, as I mentioned before, is the area. So, the area um, range from 0 to pi over 2. So therefore, uh, all we need to do is, once we have integrated this, uh, all we need to do is just uh, put in the lower boundary and upper boundary here. So therefore, the lower boundary is 0, upper boundary is pi over 2 there. <coughs> okay, so from here, let me uh, give it a try. Um, okay, so from here, I will be able to get um, a negative uh, pi, negative pi here, because uh, pi over 2 is negative pi, so this is pi over 4, uh, that will be a sub 2, 
okay and then uh, this is also um, uh, one set two there so that will be a two set two okay that will be a two set two and then this is the first part of the uh, upper boundary you can subtract off with the substitution of the lower boundary uh, if this is zero, this is zero. Uh, the other part will be zero. So therefore, you only yield up to this part, <clears throat> and then therefore you can actually uh, finish your answer uh, by putting it in this uh, form here, if you like. Okay. All right. Now that will be the uh, area under um, this curve, or the exact value is given by this. All right. <clears throat> now to check, of course, I would like to check. Uh, whether this is the correct uh, answer or not right now let's uh, just let me give you a try so if I were to I'm going to pull this up a bit <coughs> so that I can see what I'm uh, typing in okay so tech for instance uh, if I'm interested to work with um, GX here okay GX I'm trying to integrate okay so it's a functions um, gx so starting from zero until uh, pi over two in this case right <clears throat> so that's the area there 0 0.61 approximately now i'm not sure whether i got it correctly or not so now i'm going to key in my irrational numbers here so hopefully i'm able to get the uh, correct answer uh, finger cross okay uh, as you can see that is actually 0 0.61 all right okay so that uh, conclude our integrations uh, by part for this question all right uh, i will move on to us the next question shortly all right question uh, number five here all right now we are given a curve uh, that has equations so why equal to two over three uh, natural log one plus three cosine square x uh, where the uh, uh, domain has been uh, restricted to the 0 to pi over 2 inclusive now the first question we need to express the uh, dy dx in terms of uh, tangent all right and then uh, hence find the x coordinate of a point on the curve where the gradient um, I, I think what they mean is gradient or tangent is actually negative one now we need to provide the answer for the x coordinate uh, to the nearest three significant figure all right <clears throat> so before we start with this uh, just let me show you visually uh, what are we looking at now first of all we have a graph uh, that represents this curve here okay and then uh, we have um, we have a any point okay it could be any point on the uh, curve itself okay any point on the curve and then uh, if you were to draw a tangent yes uh, there will be a tangent that uh, tangents to the curve at this point B for instance Okay. and then uh, from here of course uh, you can manually um, calculate the uh, gradient of tangent right now in this case uh, I can calculate that quite easily so you can see that the gradient of tangent is basically uh, negative one okay uh, wow that indirectly have helped us to solve the x coordinate then. so from here if I were to look at my uh, point here so the point B uh, has an x coordinate of uh, uh, 1.1 so therefore um, <clears throat> the x coordinate um, of the point on the, to the curve that uh, produce a gradient of tangent equal to negative 1 is actually 1.1 1 .1. all right so that is what it actually means of course you can move the point along uh, the way if you uh, if you want and so on so it could be um, any point uh, on the uh, curve itself uh, whereby there will be a point on the curve where it will give us a gradient of tangent uh, equal to negative one right so that's how uh, it looks like visually and then the purpose of this question okay now once you're ready let's uh, work out the uh, algebra related to this <coughs> and then the calculus for this right. okay first question All right. Uh, we need to work out the uh, gradient of tangents to the curve uh, dy dx okay um, now the I'm going to show you the formal way of uh, solving that okay so the formal way is uh, we're going to use the chain rule okay so we will let um, I will say uh, let u equal to 1 plus 3 cos 
square x then all right now that's the best that we can do okay <clears throat> and then uh, by letting this equal to this uh, we can actually differentiate this first so that would actually you uh, negative 6 um, cosine x uh, sine x there right now i hope that's clear uh, once we uh, substitute uh, this expression uh, in terms of u therefore now the y can be written as 2 over 3 uh, ln u okay we can actually uh, differentiate this with respect to u and then uh, that would typically be a 2 over 3 u if you were to differentiate um, the uh, logarithmic uh, function <coughs> okay but anyway u is in terms of x so maybe it's best if we uh, substitute the original uh, representation okay so there you have it There's, that will be your dy du in term of x and then by using chain rule uh, we are interested to obtain the dy dx uh, chain rule state that we can use a dy du by du dx here so our dy du is this and then uh, our du dx is <coughs> negative 6 cosine x uh, sine x all right and then there you have it of course uh, we have to do a bit of uh, touch up here uh, that will be a negative 4 cosine x uh, sine x over 1 plus 3 cosine square x there. okay so from here uh, we, we can uh, convert this um, back into uh, the representation of tangent here. Uh, one way to do it very quickly is by dividing the numerator and denominator by cosine square. So if you do so, uh, now if you divide by cosine square, so this cos is gone, uh, therefore there's another cosine there that will yield a 4 tangent uh, x. <clears throat> now the same thing if you divide by cosine square that would uh, left with 3 instead and then you will have a secant square x now using that identity of 1 plus uh, tangent square x is equal to secant square x uh, therefore we can simplify this as 4 tangent x or over um, 4 plus tangent square x and then there you have it that's the expression for the uh, dy dx there all right now that's a formal way of how we differentiate that now next i'm going to show you a shortcut way that you can take in the exam uh, if you want to do this uh, quickly all right okay so let me erase that so the shortcut methods to uh, differentiate this would be okay now I'm going to rewrite the original function first. Okay. Now to differentiate um, a lon, the rule of thumb is, uh, of course, the number attached to that uh, multiplier will stay as uh, two over three. Uh, but when we differentiate this, uh, the shortcut methods will be the rule of thumb is to copy this expression inside uh, the lon. So I'm going to copy this one out. Okay, so once you're done with that, we're going to differentiate this uh, and then uh, place it as the numerator. So from here, you get a negative uh, 6 cos x sine x there. And then uh, you can see that that is basically the same as what we have uh, obtained previously using the formal, uh, formal way. Okay. And then uh, after that, we are going to divide this by cosine square. And then we're going to divide that by cosine square also. So doing so, you have um, you have a 4 tangent x over 3 uh, plus secant square x. And then by using this identity, uh, finally we can conclude that. This can be written as 4 plus tangent square x. Right. So that concludes the first uh, answer. I hope that's clear.
Okay. <clears throat> All right, now next, number two. All right, now hence find the x coordinate of the point on the curve uh, where the gradient is equal to negative uh, 1. Now we have already obtained our gradient function which is negative 4 tangent x uh, over 1 plus, oh, sorry, 4 plus uh, tangent square x. And then all we need to do is just assign this uh, gradient of tangent equal to negative uh, 1 and then uh, uh, solve it. Uh, solve the quadratic equation here. We have a tangent square x uh, minus a 4 tangent x plus a 4 equal to a 0 here. And then uh, by factorization, of course, um, I assume you should be able to obtain this. Uh, therefore, tangent x is actually equal to 2 uh, because all these values are found in the first quadrant. So most probably the x will be a positive value. You can see that the positive value is somewhere here, which is uh, actually 1 by 1. Right. So therefore, the x can be obtained by um, evaluating its uh, uh, inverse uh, tangent. Okay, so just let me try using the software here. Uh, to check if I get the inverse uh, tangent, the arc tangent, or whether I got the same answer. <coughs> now, of course, that answer is in uh, degree, okay, but never mind. If it's in degree, I will convert it to um, radian form. So, all I need to do is just do a bit of conversion, yes. So, you can see that uh, the answer is actually. Uh, equal to 1.11 uh, to the nearest three significant figures. All right, so I hope that is clear uh, for this question. All right, now I'm going to move on to the next one shortly. All right, let's take a look at uh, question six here. Uh, this is a problem about complex number. The complex numbers W and Z are defined as uh, given here. All right. <coughs> Um, now, the first question, express um, IW over Z in the form of X plus IY, showing all your working and uh, giving the exact values of uh, X and Y, right? Now, let's uh, give it a try in this case. <coughs> so, basically, um, you can start by uh, working with IW first. Okay, so IW is basically just uh, I multiply with W. So 5 plus 3i here. Now, bear in mind, um, we need to make a remark here. i squared is basically equal to uh, negative 1, right? Okay, so from here, we will be able to get, um, in this case, it's a negative 3 uh, because i squared is negative 1. So you get negative 3 uh, plus uh, 5i uh, here, right? <coughs> now, uh, visually, visually, um, or geometrically, the operations of uh, I with any complex number is actually a rotation of 90 degree um, counterclockwise. Right now, just uh, let me demonstrate to you in this case. Okay. So take for instance, uh, we have um, where is the. <coughs> The, okay, now um, our W, okay, so our W uh, here I call it a Z1, so it's a 5 plus a 3i, uh, whereby let me call the uh, Z2, Z2 as a i. Then I want to demonstrate to you uh, the uh, complex operations between an i and any other uh, complex number uh, with you uh, transformations of uh, uh, rotations. Um, about the origin 90 degree counterclockwise. All right. Okay, now you can see that from here. Okay, so the I is the um, uh, this complex number here, whereby our W is this complex number uh, 5 plus 3i there. And then uh, you can see that uh, it is a rotation of uh, this complex number about the origin 90 degree. 
Okay, so that is actually a rotation is about 90 degree. Right. <clears throat> now the proof uh, for this, okay, now I'll roughly uh, show the proof here uh, just for you to understand it. Why, why is it a, a rotation of uh, 90 degree here? Right. <clears throat> now this has nothing to do with the uh, question here. Okay. Now, before I show you the proof, uh, maybe it's best if I just uh, show you the solutions to this first uh, before we look into the proof itself. So, uh, let me complete it first. So, there will be I, W over Z. Uh, so, I, W over Z. Uh, that will be negative 3 plus 5I uh, divided by Z. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, at this point, uh, in order to uh, rationalize this, we will have to introduce its uh, complex conjugates. So the complex conjugates for the denominator, which is uh, 4 minus i. Okay, so from here, uh, we can simplify that as a negative 2. And then uh, we have here like uh, 20i. And then you have uh, 3i. And then uh, finally, we will have uh, positive 5. Yeah. And then uh, the denominator will be 17. Right? So from here, if you try to uh, simplify that, just let me see if I got it uh, correct. Um, yes, so that is actually negative 7 uh, plus... 23i over 17. Uh, therefore, uh, the uh, expressions of i, w over z can be expressed as uh, 7 over 17 uh, plus 23 over 17i there, where the uh, x is equal to negative 7 over 17 and um, y is equal to 23 over uh, 17 here. Now I hope that's clear. This is a typical um, operations how we actually uh, perform uh, rationalizations of uh, complex number. Okay. Now next, as I uh, mentioned, I like to show you uh, the operations, the uh, complex uh, operations between an i and any other complex number with u uh, rotation about the origin 90 degree uh, counterclockwise. Okay. Now, uh, let me uh, clean this up. <clears throat> okay. All right. Here. Okay. Now, first of all, uh, I. I can be written in term of uh, Euler form. Uh, Euler format of complex number. Uh, that is typically um, a one unit uh, magnitude. And then the... Um, the Argon diagram is uh, basically 90 degree, so we can actually write that uh, complex number in the form of uh, Euler format. Okay, you can see that. Whereby uh, W, okay, W uh, would have a certain uh, magnitude here. So you can see that I just call the magnitude as uh, R here. And then uh, R e to the power of I theta. Uh, where the r is uh, basically uh, root 34 and the uh, theta is the arc tangent of uh, 3 over 5 here. Okay, now the operations of i, w uh, would you uh, this one here, so that will be e i pi over 2 multiplied by r e I theta here. So if you uh, simplify this, it will be theta plus pi over 2. So you can see that the um, uh, the magnitude will follow the magnitude of the complex number W. So the magnitude never change, uh, whereby um, the uh, angle would increase by 90 degree uh, in the in the counterclockwise direction. So you can see that originally the angle with respect to the um, real axis is theta. So now it has been uh, rotated uh, 90 degrees here about the origin 
um, directions would be uh, counterclockwise. Now this is a simple proof as to why whenever you multiply an i with any complex number, uh, geometrically it is a, a rotation of uh, 90 degree about the uh, origin uh, directions is counterclockwise. All right. Now I hope that uh, would be an extra information for your learning. All right. Now we are done with number one. Okay. Let's look at number two now. <clears throat> Okay, number two. All right, just let me clean this up here. All right, number two. Uh, now find the WZ and hence by considering arguments uh, show that uh, this is true. Okay, so WZ, let's do uh, the multiplications of uh, WZ here. Okay, WZ shouldn't be a problem. So that is basically just uh, 3i uh, by the Z, which is uh, 4 plus i here. Okay, so from here uh, we will get a uh, twenty. Is that a uh, twenty? Yes, correct. Okay, twenty uh, minus a uh, three, and then uh, we have here twelve and five seventeen i there. So that will be a seventeen, a one plus i. <coughs> okay, so I hope uh, that is uh, clear here. Now you can actually uh, write this uh, w z in the Euler form. Uh, if you like, so this is basically uh, 17 2. Okay, first of all, you have to obtain the magnitude for i plus uh, 1. Okay, and then uh, on the argon diagram, this is uh, uh, a 45 degree about the origin here. So, therefore, we can actually write it down as uh, i pi over 4 here. Okay, so this is the operations of uh, w uh, z here. Right. So you can see that the argument, uh, the argument, all right, so I'm going to write down the argument of uh, WZ is uh, basically 45 degree. Uh, so that's the best thing about using uh, Euler form. So you can obtain the argument directly. So it's actually 45 degree. All right. Now, then again, we can also uh, apply uh, one of the properties of um, multiplications between complex number. Uh, we know that the multiplications between the complex number here with, uh, with relations to its argument, it is the same as um, argument W plus argument Z here. Okay, now from here um, argument W. So argument W can be obtained uh, quite easily. So here I'm going to write it down. Our argument W is actually given by um, inverse uh, tangent uh, 3 over 5. Okay, um, this can be seen from here. So if you were to refer to the argon diagram again, okay, so that will be um, uh, this part is the real section and then this is the imaginary so we have a, 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 a fine unit uh, to the right and then three unit up here so that will be our complex number uh, w the argument uh, w is given by this uh, theta for instance now that will be given by uh, this is three unit this is five unit here so it's the uptangent of uh, three over five <clears throat> now, by repeating the same procedure, uh, we will be able to obtain the argument for uh, Z then. So, argument for Z will be the inverse tangent of uh, 1 over 4. <clears throat> so, therefore, by using this uh, property, uh, we can conclude that the summation of this is basically equal to this. Okay, and then we know that uh, from sections number one here, uh, the argument of the uh, products of these two uh, complex number is uh, 45 degree. So therefore, we can conclude that the sum of uh, both this octangent uh, must yield uh, 45 uh, degree here. All right. Now I hope uh, that is clear. Uh, this is from the uh, geometrical uh, point of view and a bit of uh, the property of the multiplications between the, um, the 
the argument, uh, the argument of uh, two complex number. So the argument of the product of two complex number is the same as the sum of each individual arguments. Right. <clears throat> All right. Now next, I'm going to show you um, another approach to actually obtain the same result, uh, but through the use of a full um, definitions of um, Euler form uh, to represent the complex number. Right. So let me uh, clean up everything. <coughs> okay. All right. So let me rewrite this one more time. Okay. Now we know that uh, the product of WZ is given by 17i1 uh, plus i here. Okay. Now in terms of uh, argon diagram, just to show you one more time. Uh, this organ diagram here. Uh, this is actually 17 unit. Okay, so this is WZ, 17 unit. And then uh, basically is uh, 17 here. And then 17 unit here. Uh, therefore, this one must be uh, 45 degree. And then we can represent this uh, product as the um, Euler form. Right? We can represent this uh, product of these two complex number in the form of uh, Euler format. So in terms of Euler format, we will need to find out its uh, magnitude here. Okay, so the magnitude is basically just uh, 17 square root plus 17 square, uh, sorry, 17 square plus 17 square, uh, square root, uh, the sum of the square there. So therefore, we should be able to get this one here. Uh, exactly as the uh, answer that I have shown to you in the previous section. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now next, uh, the product of WZ is uh, basically the same as this. Okay. Now we can actually write uh, the W and Z in the uh, Euler form. Sorry. Let me rewrite that. So W in its Euler form. So W in its Euler form will be, uh, I will just label that as R1, for instance. Uh, e, I, theta 1. Then. Uh, where the R1 is uh, 34 square root is the magnitude for uh, this complex number. And then whereby the uh, theta 1 is the uptangent of uh, 3 over 5. Okay, and then we can repeat the same thing for Z. Uh, Z we can write it down as R2, EI theta 2, there, uh, where R2 is uh, 17 square root, and uh, theta 2 is given by the arc tangent uh, 1 over 4. All right, now I hope that is clear. Now, through the uh, product between these two complex numbers, so if I multiply both of these, Right. That would yield R1 with R2, and then our exponential rule state that is um, theta1 plus theta2 here. And then uh, we know that this is actually equal to uh, 17 root 2 ei pi over 4 here. <clears throat> now by comparison, by comparison, uh, we should know that the product of the magnitude must be the same as 17 uh, root 2. And uh, by comparison with the argument, we notice that uh, I1 plus, uh, sorry, theta 1 plus theta 2 must be the same as um, pi of 4. And then we know that theta 1 is this. Uh, therefore, um, we are able to prove this. Uh, expression. Oh, sorry, we are able to prove this uh, equation here. Uh, therefore, the this equation would be uh, pi over four. Uh, therefore, it is proven. Now, I hope that that is uh, clear in this case. All right. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, next, I'm going to uh, move on to the next question shortly. So, stay tuned. All right. Let's take a look at uh, question seven here. Um, we are given two straight lines uh, given by that uh, vector equation uh, where A is uh, constant. We need to show that the lines intersect for all the values of A. 
okay now visually the lines look something like this so the um, the green one is um, is representing this uh, straight line okay and then way by the red one represented by this okay All right so you can see that uh, they are actually intersecting okay now the value of a itself uh, can be uh, can be changed so let's give it a try for instance I have uh, many value of a here okay so maybe I make it larger a bit just to show you what you are looking at okay so these are the two lines here okay well they still intersect if I use a different value of x let's see yeah they do they do intersect you can see that Right. So no matter what value of x that you are changing, uh, they will definitely um, intersect with each other. So that is the uh, question here. We need to show that the lines intersect for all value of uh, a here. Okay. So let's let's look at how to uh, work with this. Okay. Just let me show you one more time. I can see that uh, they are not parallel, so most probably they are going to intersect. All right, so I hope that give you an idea of uh, what we are looking at for this question here. So the intersection point is somewhere here. Uh, now just let me walk you through to the second section. So let's assume that they actually intersect here. Okay, uh, this line and this line. So they intersect at the point C, for instance. Now we are interested to find out uh, its distance uh, C here. Uh, from the origin is yes. so that will be the distance from the, this uh, position vector to the origin is yes. right now of course uh, if I use um, if I use uh, uh, any measurement tool I should be able to obtain uh, the length or the distance of this position vector with respect to the uh, origin there right now let me rotate it to the perspective that you can see properly you can see that they intersect at point C and then uh, how far is this position vector from the origin itself right <clears throat> okay now I hope that is uh, clear right now next I'm going to uh, walk you through the algebra um, how we can use algebra and uh, vector uh, tools to uh, solve this problem right okay now first one uh, show that the lines are intersecting okay so first of all uh, for line one uh, maybe I'm going to write it down as uh, such so I can write it down as 1 4 negative 2 uh, you can write in the in the matrix form like this okay there will be uh, this part you have to be very uh, careful it's actually 1 0 3 all right so that's how it look like and the way by for line number two Okay, so for line 2, we can write as a 2, negative 2 here, uh, plus a mu, and then uh, 1, 2, 3, a. Okay, so that's what we have. All right. Now, of course, uh, now since they meet at a certain point here, uh, when they meet, therefore, uh, both of these vector must be the same okay so both of these vector must be the same right? all we need to do is just equate these uh, vectors together uh, row by row so we're going to make a comparison uh, with the uh, row uh, data so for each row we have for the first row we have uh, on the left hand side here we have uh, one plus lambda uh, must be the same as uh, a so this is a plus a uh, mu here And then uh, that will be sort of our first uh, equation here. Then the second one, uh, we have 4, uh, must be equal to uh, 2 plus 2 mu. All right, so there you have it. And then um, now here you can uh, sort of simplify that uh, quite easily. We found that the mu is actually equal to a 1. Okay, so we know for sure the mu is equal to a 1 there, and then uh, knowing the mu is equal to 1, we can substitute back here 
uh, therefore the lambda lambda must be equal to a okay so lambda must be equal to a and then lastly uh, we're going to uh, use the uh, last sets of formula usually it's meant for checking lambda uh, should be equal to negative 2 plus 3a uh, mu in this case right. <clears throat> okay so you can see that the uh, negative 2 cancel and then um, the mu is a 1 uh, so therefore we still end up with uh, lambda equal to a then. okay so therefore that will be the solutions for uh, our lambda so therefore the lambda can take any uh, constant a here now because uh, a are all real numbers uh, a are all real numbers uh, therefore the lambda would also uh, represent all real numbers here okay now because uh, lambda are all real numbers uh, therefore we have already shown that uh, now in this case uh, we have already shown that the lines intersect so both r1 uh, intersect r2 okay uh, for all okay so here i'm using a shortcut method uh, for all uh, a value which are all real numbers all right so first question i hope that that's clear all right now i'm going to move on to the second section shortly all right question seven uh, section two okay now from the first part we have already found out that the um, lambda is equal to a and then we have also found out that the mu is actually equal to one here so therefore the line equations uh, can be written either one uh, for instance r1 uh, can be written as 1 4 negative 2 uh, plus um, a for instance plus a 1 0 3 here uh, if you want right? and then it can be written in its uh, compact form for instance 1 plus a or 4 um 3a minus 2 here all right now this would uh, actually be the position vector position vector of the intersection point uh, so now in this case based on my diagram i can actually uh, label this as oc as 1 plus a 4 3a minus 2 here and then knowing that the distance uh, of this intersection point from the origin is 9 unit uh, therefore it means that by using Pythagoras theorem uh, this one must be equal to a nice square here right <clears throat> okay so by solving this uh, let's give that a try so we have like uh, 1 2 a plus a square plus 9 a square uh, 12 a plus 4 here uh, that will be 5 13 65 5 13 65 okay and then um, we have a 5 60 there so therefore this is a 10 a square um, minus uh, 10 a and then uh, finally we have uh, 96 uh, 60 here let me see yeah correct so therefore this one can be uh, factorized quite uh, quite easily so that is basically just a 3 and a 2 here okay and then uh, therefore we have successfully found uh, all the values uh, that are possible for a here that we yield the intersection point between the two lines all right now, i hope that is clear at this point all right now i'm going to move on to the next question shortly all right let's look at uh, question eight now in a certain chemical reaction a compound a is formed from a compound uh, b all right. now the masses of a and b at time t after the start of the reactions are uh, x and y respectively and then the sum of the masses is equal to 50 throughout the reaction so at any time the rate of increase of mass a is proportional to the mass 
uh, of B at that time. So now we need to explain like why we have the uh, rate of change in the mass, uh, rate of change uh, or rate of increase of mass of A is equal to K um, 50 minus X here, where K is uh, constant. Now, uh, once we are able to explain that, uh, we're going to solve that uh, first order differential equation. Uh, because this uh, first order differential equation is separable, so we are going to utilize or apply the uh, separable equations technique uh, to solve this um, first order differential equation, right? Using all the uh, given conditions or boundary conditions in this case, right? <clears throat> okay, let's get uh, started with this. Okay, now uh, let's uh, try to. Um, Write down all the information that, that are given uh, to us so in this case. Okay, number one here. Okay, uh, we are told that uh, B, okay, so is that B? Uh, compound A is formed from compound B. So let's assume that the reactant is compound B and that it produce uh, the uh, product A in this case. All right now, uh, each one of these uh, compound A and B has a mass of uh, X and or y here and then um, it it is restricted uh, by the total uh, total mass of 50 which means it is given that the sum of the masses uh, must be uh, 50 throughout the reaction uh, due to uh, conservations of uh, masses and energy right <clears throat> so from here we can uh, rewrite this as uh, in terms of uh, uh, y as a subject, so y is 50 minus x there. All right, now that shouldn't be uh, difficult. Okay, next we're going to uh, translate this uh, sentence into its uh, mathematical notation. It says that at any uh, time the rate of increase of the mass of A is proportional. So the rate of increase of the mass of A. Uh, this is the rate of increase of mass A is directly uh, is proportional to the mass B. So mass B is a Y here. This is a, a relation. All right. So you can write in the form of relation, or you can convert that into an equation. So in terms of equation, we can rewrite that as uh, equal to K Y, where our Y is given by 50 minus X. Therefore, uh, we can conclude that the rate of increase of mass A is given by K multiplied by 50 minus X, where K, um, I would say K is any uh, real numbers in this case. All right? Now I hope uh, the first uh, question is clear. Now, secondly, we are going to solve this uh, uh, first order differential equation using all these uh, two conditions given to us. Okay. Now, first of all, try to identify whether um, the variable are separable. So you notice that uh, the x and the constants are separable. Uh, therefore, we can um, we can group. Right now, um, I like to apply this uh, divide and conquer strategy or grouping. Okay, so uh, the like terms uh, would go with the uh, uh, the change in x. Okay, because uh, x is from the same group. Therefore, we can group them together here. Uh, where by the constant, we can group it together with the uh, uh, difference in time, uh, t here. And then in order to reverse the process of differentiations, uh, we're going to apply uh, integration or antiderivative. And then uh, from here, I hope that uh, you guys still remember how to integrate this. Uh, be very mindful with uh, these types of integration, it, it is a negative uh, ln 50 minus x there. Right. Now, uh, do uh, be wary about um, the result of the integration for ln. Okay. Now, for ln, uh, the, the value for ln cannot be negative or it cannot be zero. It must be anything that is greater than zero. But in this case, we know that the maximum mass uh, both of them can have is only up to 50. So the maximum value for x, for either x or y, can only be 50. So this is uh, quite safe uh, to leave it without the modulus sign. Okay. So now that will be equal to kt in this case. All right. <clears throat> Plus a C, of course, if you want to uh, make it complete 
uh, don't forget that all right now once you are here we are almost there so the first step is we're going to um, utilize the first initial condition when t is equal to zero the initial uh, mass for a uh, before the reaction started of course the mass of a should be a uh, zero uh, therefore by using this uh, condition all you need to do is just uh, substitute the x equals 0 t as the um, sorry t equals 0 x is equal to 0 and uh, that will use c um, that, uh, that will use c equal to negative ln uh, 50 there. right now i hope that is clear uh, once you've got this we're going to rewrite uh, this uh, equation one more time so i'm going to rewrite that as equal to kt minus uh, ln 50 and then uh, most of the time uh, for myself I prefer to uh, group them again knowing that uh, ln belongs to the same group All right. so the strategy that I'm applying is very similar to how uh, human uh, would behave in our society so uh, same people with the same uh, wavelength or frequency would tends to uh, be attracted together Right, so that is uh, one of my motivations to actually group the lawn together. So if I group the lawn together, I should be able to get uh, 50 over 50 minus x equal to a kt here. Right. <clears throat> so at this point, I'm I'm almost done. All I need to do is uh, find out what is the missing constant k here by using the second condition. So by um, when t is equal to zero. I know that x is equal to 25 there. So I'm going to put that in. Uh, I will notice that I will have, uh, when t is equal to 10, sorry. So therefore, I will have 10k equal to uh, ln 2 in this case. Therefore, k will be uh, ln 2 over 10. There. Right. So I hope that is clear. Well, once you have uh, obtained this, uh, we can uh, conclude this statement over here. Uh, these uh, equations over here uh, we can rewrite as ln 50 over 50 minus x is equal to a uh, ln 2 over 10 uh, t here and then uh, after that you can uh, uh, rearrange this further become 50 minus x equal to um, exponential ln 2 over 10 t and then uh, fi finally, of course, uh, I'm running out of space here, so I'm going to write it down at the side here. Okay, up here, it will be easier. So from here, I can write down 50 minus x is actually equal to 50 exponential negative ln 2 over 10 uh, t here. And then finally, I can conclude that um, the uh, mass of uh, x at any one point in time would be given by uh, this um, explicit uh, equation in terms of uh, time. Alright, so there you have it. That will be the um, expression for x in terms of t. Alright, now I hope that is uh, clear at this point. Now next, I'm going to show you the uh, second strategy uh, how we can uh, solve this. Um, not by using a direct uh, result of this uh, integration. But yet we are going to modify a bit and then we're going to see whether uh, there are some other difficulty that we will be uh, facing. All right, so um, stay tuned for a short while. I'm going to show it to you um, shortly. All right, let's look at the second strategy on how to uh, solve the uh, first order differential equation. Now I'm going to write the uh, first order differential equations one more time here. So we have dx uh, dt equal to k uh, 50 minus x here. And then uh, they are separable. So therefore, I'm going to repeat this process one more time. Mm, there's uh, not much uh, difference here. Uh, all we need to do is just uh, perform the uh, antiderivative here. And then uh, what comes next will be a little bit different from what we did. Right. Now, for some of you who don't like uh, this negative here, because uh, we tend to forget to include the negative in our integration. So therefore, uh, what I would do would be most of the time, uh, maybe due to a habit, uh, it's kind of habitual here. So I would tend to 
remove the negative in such a way uh, so that I don't uh, I, I won't forget uh, sorry I, I won't forget the uh, negative sign uh, during the integration right so from here I will be able to obtain these integrations quite directly without uh, worry and then on the right hand side it should be kt plus c uh, shouldn't be a problem right? <clears throat> but what come next here will be very interesting right? now most of the time if you leave out the detail uh, you will face a lot of difficulty even though this equation is not tough to integrate uh, now my suggestion is when you do it this way uh, you have to remember to put a modulus sign here the main reason is because uh, the the maximum value for the so maximum mass for x is 50 yes correct but along the way uh, the value of x uh, may not have reached uh, the maximum value so therefore the the deviations of this value of x and the 50 itself would be a negative now alone um, cannot handle negative value so due to its uh, function itself so therefore you have to put a, a modulus sign all right so there you go now the same thing uh, by using its uh, initial conditions so we would be able to reach a conclusions of um, c equal to uh, ln uh, 50 negative uh, ln 50 exactly like before and then uh, what is difference will be uh, the uh, the next part okay so when i'm going to write it down here so when t is equal to 10 the x is equal to 25 here All right so we are going to substitute this value into here we will have um, that will be a 25 okay uh, it's a modulus actually right? because 25 minus uh, 50 you get a negative uh, 25 and then uh, you have a uh, 10k and then uh, minus a uh, long 50 here okay and then uh, from here this modulus would give us a uh, a very nice uh, positive number 25 and then uh, by grouping this we have uh, ln uh, ln 2 actually because it's 50 divided by 25 which is ln 2 uh, therefore we have obtained the same result like before the k still remain the same as ln 2 over 10 ah, but what come next will be very interesting okay so what come next would be uh, once we have all this we can rewrite this as ln uh, x minus 50 but don't forget the modulus sign uh, the k still remain the same and then uh, the ln 50 will still be there and then um, uh, usually we will tend to uh, join this uh, together okay so uh, now if you are if you are not keen on joining that is fine okay if you are not keen on um, uh, joining all you need to do is just remove the negative over so here I try to show you a different strategy um, as long as you follow the proper mathematical uh, rules and logic uh, then you will be fine so that will be plus uh, ln 50 here all right you see that okay so from here we are I'm going to um, perform an anti logarithmic so therefore I will end up with uh, this one here uh, that will be an e negative ln 2 10 t and then uh, e on uh, 50 would you uh, 50 okay all right you can see that aha uh -huh. now we are almost there except that this is uh, uh, in modulus so therefore the final stage okay we have uh, two cases to consider here so the first case would be uh, first case if you consider uh, the whole expression is positive so if we consider this as f like this positive uh, therefore we will write down like this okay and then therefore we conclude that uh, it will be 50 plus exponential ln 2 10 uh, t okay and then there you have it uh, but you will notice that if you have this expression okay uh, the x would most probably be more than uh, 50 there will uh, there will be um, time when this is definitely is going to be more than 50 which is not possible because the maximum uh, value of uh, x can only be 50 uh, due to the uh, restric uh, restriction set here yeah 
So because of that, uh, this cannot be accepted. Uh, this is not logical in practical. It could be logical mathematically, but it's not logical practically. Right? So in terms of chemistry, when you carry out this, uh, this experiment, uh, this mathematical does not fit in the real world um, results. Therefore, we can look at uh, conditions number two or case number two. So case number two, we will take the negative of this equal to this here. All right. And then uh, after rearrangement, uh, we end up with. And then there you have it. It's the same answer like what we did in our previous uh, sections there, All right? So I hope that uh, you are clear uh, on the kind of uh, path or difficulty that you are facing. Uh, don't panic. There is, uh, just follow the rules and the flaw of mathematics. Uh, then you, you will be uh, able to reason, uh, analyze it in more detail. Uh, this is the proper way to learn more than what the questions are uh, required. All right, now I hope that is clear. I'm going to move on to the next question shortly. All right, let's look at uh, question nine here. All right. Now, the first one we need to sketch the curve uh, y equal to ln uh, x plus 1, and hence uh, by sketching a second uh, curve, okay, show that the, the equation x cubed plus uh, ln x plus 1 equal to 40 has exactly uh, one real root. Okay, set the equation of the second uh, curve here. Right now, let's uh, take a look at how to work with this. Okay, uh, now the first uh, part we need, we just need to follow the instructions. We need to sketch uh, this graph here. So we're going to sketch that y equal to uh, ln x plus one. Now the rule of thumb: so whenever you want to sketch any uh, types of functions at all or graph, uh, we have to uh, find out the uh, intercepts the x and y intercepts all right so you will notice that uh, when x is equal to zero uh, the y is also equal to zero which means this curve actually uh, passes through the origin okay and then uh, next to find the x intercept okay so to find the x intercept uh, the the x is also equal to zero uh, which means uh, this particular curve um only uh, i would say only passes through uh, that particular uh, point uh, at the origin there, right? So you can actually test it out. So when this is actually equal to uh, zero here, uh, that would actually yield x is equal to zero. So therefore, the intersection point is actually the uh, the origin. Okay, so that is good. And then next, uh, there is a restriction set on uh, logarithmic functions. So we know that x plus one uh, must always be greater than a zero there. So this value must always be greater than zero. Uh, that imply x must be greater than uh, negative one. Okay. So which means x equal to negative one is the vertical asymptotes. So it does have a vertical uh, asymptote at x equal to uh, negative one there. Right. <clears throat> okay. So generally, that's how uh, it actually looked like. So I'm going to try to sketch it out. And then after that, try to see if we need any extra uh, information before we proceed. Okay. So we know that there's a vertical asymptote. It passes through at the uh, origin there. So I might want to put my graph or something like this. So that will be a y and then a x here. The origin is here. Okay, we know that the uh, graph passes through the origin. Okay, we also know that the uh, uh, negative one is the vertical asymptote. Uh, now, vertical asymptotes uh, basically is a line where the curve does not uh, crosses but get uh, very near. All right, so that x equal to negative one is our vertical asymptote right <clears throat> so uh, the graph uh, passes through over here okay uh, we will know that for any uh, x value uh, that is uh, greater than negative one uh, the logarithmic would you a positive value uh, it will you positive value so the 
uh, the the larger the value, uh, the larger the logarithmic uh, uh, will uh, will be in this case, right? <clears throat> so let's look at how the uh, graph actually uh, look like in this case, right? <clears throat> okay, so we know that it passes through here. Okay, uh, you might want to find like at this point of time. Uh, we may not really know for sure. Okay, now if you look at the uh, Cartesian coordinate, it has four quadrants there. Yeah. Uh, once you have uh, identified your vertical asymptotes, instead of looking at that uh, black lines as a guideline for your quadrant, now you should be looking at the green line, which is the asymptote, uh, to give you the idea of the uh, uh, quadrant. So you have one quadrant over here. Yeah, another quadrant over here. You have the big quadrant over here and another quadrant over here. So it feels like as if the y-axis has been shifted over here. Uh, that's how you should actually mentally uh, have an idea how the graph would actually um, look like. Okay. So we, we know that for sure the graph is going to pass through the origin. It's going to be uh, either at the top here going down or whether it's from the bottom going up and then in between is there any uh, some sorts like the uh, stationary points on it yeah you might want to find out so one way to do this is by uh, get the help from differentiation so we try to differentiate that with respect to x so that is basically uh, 1 over uh, x plus 1 here now, knowing that your uh, x is more than uh, negative 1, okay, so you will know that this, um, this um, gradient or tangent should always be greater than uh, 0. So the gradient is always greater than 0. Therefore, the graph must be climbing up, must be climbing up. Uh, but the rate, like the rate of uh, the graph, uh, climbing up. You can see that even though the gradient is positive, but uh, since the value of x is increasing, the gradient is getting smaller and smaller. So you can see that gradient is positive, but the rate of increase is uh, slowing down. Okay. So therefore, there will be a point. Okay. I would say that uh, when when x is getting very huge. Therefore, the gradient of tangent uh, possibly would reach a zero there. All right. So therefore, that actually gives us um, sort of another uh, another um, idea of uh, what would happen to the graph itself in the long run. Uh, now we are ready to sketch the graph now. Right, with all these informations, I know that it's a positive gradient, so therefore it cannot start from here. It's supposed to be going upward. Okay, so therefore the graph would look something like this. I would say all right, roughly, and then uh, the the gradient here, you will see that uh, eventually uh, the graph would reach a, a plateau. I would say, right? Uh, the gradient of the graph would be nearly zero. Okay, so the shape of the graph will look uh, something like this. So I hope that is uh, clear at this point. Uh, these are some of the guidelines on um, how you should be using to sketch any types of uh, graph here. Okay, so we are done with the first part. We have uh, successfully um, sketched uh, the graph y equal to ln x plus uh, 1 here. And then next, uh, by sketching a second curve, um, show that the equation uh, x cubed plus ln x plus 1 equal to 40 has exactly uh, one real root. Right? Now to do that, to do that for uh, number uh, 2 here, okay, so we, sorry, we are still on uh, at number 1. So, um, sorry, we are still at number 1, but I write down number 2 there. Okay, so we are still at number 1. Now uh, if I rewrite that, uh, x cubed, uh, we know that this ln x plus 1 is written as y, so therefore I can actually write this as y. And then by rearranging you, uh, y as a subject, you will notice that this is the second graph that you are supposed to sketch in order uh, to find the intersection point with the ln x plus 1 
uh, and then these intersections uh, would be the solutions to these uh, equations here. All right. Okay. Now, how do we sketch this? Is uh, pretty much uh, straightforward, all right? Because this is a cubic graph, all right? And then now uh, we know that the uh, gradient of this uh, graph is uh, negative. So it must be uh, decreasing, uh, its slope is decreasing, and then uh, it uh, passes through the um, y-intercept at uh, 40, okay, 40 is quite uh, quite high above, okay, and then um, uh, the it also passes through the x-intercept at, uh, at a point, um, let me see, at the point of uh, uh, 2 root 5. So it passes through the x-intercept, it also passes through the y-intercept. So uh, roughly without um, any um, accurate measurement here, so I would say that it passes through, let's assume that this is 40, I'm not very sure actually. Okay, oh, oops, sorry, that's not uh, 50, that is 40. Okay, just let me change that. Okay, take for a while, okay, now 40. 40, 40, 40, all right. <clears throat> okay, it's still a bit slow. Uh, please be patient a bit here. All right, I almost uh, got rid of this. All right, now that is a 40, okay. 40, and then it passes through some way here, which is a uh, root uh, 40 there. So root 40 is basically a uh, two root five. So the two root five will be some way here. Okay, and then the graph is uh, decreasing graph. Therefore, um, decreasing graph, the graph would uh, look something, I would say it looks something like this. Yep, so the graph will look something like this, right? It's uh, always decreasing, whereby the first graph is always increasing. So one is increased, one is decreased. Uh, there was uh, never uh, going up and down. So there's only one possibility where they can meet. They can only meet at one uh, intersection point. So you can see that uh, we have managed to state the second uh, curve, which is here. And then we managed to show that there's only one intersection point. Uh, maybe at point P here, right? Now that is number one. I hope that is clear. All right, now we're going to go to number two now. <clears throat> okay, number two. All right, now verify by calculations that the root, uh, this root here, actually lies between uh, three and four. Okay, three and four. Uh, this one here is actually for, uh, around four here. So I assume maybe maybe three will be around here. Okay, this is around three, and then four will be around here. Okay, so the root is uh, between three and four. Visually, it looks uh, quite okay. Right? But how how do we verify it uh, algebraically? So first of all, we're going to restructure this. We're going to write that down as. Um, um, yep, okay, so you, you can write any how you like, so take for instance, um, in this case I would write down like this, equal to zero. So here I will let uh, the functions be fx equal to x3 minus 40 plus uh, ln x plus 1 here. So I will call this uh, the function uh, fx here. Uh, all I need to do is to check for sign change. Okay, so I'm going to check for uh, F3. So I'm going to put in F3 here. That will be 3 to the power 3 minus 40 plus ln um, 3 plus 1 here. Okay, all right, now looking at this uh, number here, most probably, okay, most probably, I would say most probably. Okay, just let me verify that even though there's a lot of uh, probably, okay, uh, lawn uh, 4 here. So you can see that it's actually a negative uh, number. So this is, um, I would say, if you want, you can just write down this is less than 0. Okay, and then you're going to check for uh, F4, uh, 4 to the power 3, 40 plus lawn, um, in this case, it will be 5 then. 
Okay, so let's uh, let me also give it a try uh, to see whether it works or not. Okay, now that will be a 64 minus 40 plus a lawn uh, 5 there. So that is definitely a positive uh, value. Okay, now what does this actually mean? Okay, what does this actually mean? This uh, actually look, uh, it, it, instead of looking at this uh, graph here, we should be looking at another uh, graph. Uh, something like this. So if I were to plot this graph fx, so this fx would uh, most probably look something like this. Let me see here. Uh, yeah, so the fx would most probably look something like this. And then this is the way the root is located. And then what I, I have uh, done is I try to check for the y value when x is equal to 3. I found that uh, the value is actually less than 0. And then after that, I'm going to check for my y value when the x is equal to 4. I found that this is actually um, more than uh, 0 there. So because uh, the graph is continuous, and then um, the, it, um, it actually moved from a lower region to the upper region, uh, therefore, uh, we are quite confident that the uh, graph must be cutting the x-axis at a point in between 3 and 4. Now that is what we are uh, trying to uh, test out here in this case. Right? So I'm going to pause here. Uh, you can think about uh, that this graph and this graph is not uh, the same graph. Uh, this is actually the combinations of all the two uh, graphs to form one single graph. Whereby this is a, a separate uh, two graphs that uh, meet together at that intersection point. And then that intersection point P is the same as these uh, solutions P here also. All right. So that is your similarity. I hope that is clear for second question. All right. Okay. Now, next, uh, we're going to move on to number three now. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Right. Number three, uh, we have to use the iterative formula uh, given as uh, x uh, n plus 1 uh, with a suitable starting value to find the root correct to three decimal places. Uh, give the result of each iteration to five uh, decimal places. So the um, x value that I'm going to use uh, in this case would be any x value in between 3 and 4. So maybe I can start by uh, using... Uh, x0 uh, as my starting value. Right. So if x0 is my starting value, uh, therefore my x1 from here when n is equal to uh, 0, so my x1 can be calculated as 40 minus uh, ln x1. Okay, so uh, sorry, x0 here, which is um, x0 plus 1 and then uh, cube root. Uh, cube root. Right? So from my um, software here, I'm going to check what I'm getting so it's easier in this case. So from my uh, software here, I would be able to get uh, the first answer be 3.38. Three okay, 3 and 3n. Uh, they say leave to um, 5 decimal places. Just let me check whether it's 5 decimal places or not. Okay, it's five decimal places. All right. <clears throat> okay, once you're done with that, uh, then we're going to move on to uh, X2 now. Okay, X2 will be 40 minus ln uh, X1 plus 1 here. Cube root. All right, and then that would actually give me, let me see what is my uh, X2. Okay, my X2 is also the same. Let me check, let me check. Oops, uh, there must be something not right here. Just let me check whether my formula is correctly entered. Yes, it's correctly entered. Uh, is equal to B2 is correct. Mm, this is uh, A2 here. Okay, cool. Hmm, why the numbers are not working properly? Okay, hold on. Just let me uh, check one more time. This is A2, A2, yeah. Okay, let me correct that one more time. So I'm going to uh, enter that directly. So from here is 
40 minus ln uh, here plus 1 did I key in correctly? oh no, I did key in correctly but I forgot to put equal sign 40 minus ln a so therefore there is one bracket uh, another bracket there okay that seemed oh yeah yeah, yeah correct <laughs> there's a error in my functions there's a t there all right now i got it and then uh, therefore this should be the same as this uh, number here all right okay let me try to see what i have uh-huh okay why the number only give me less than five decimal places just let me check let me try to put 10 decimal places does it work yeah it does work so there's a glitch in the software itself there's a delay i think okay never mind let me set it back to five uh, decimal places there okay so from here uh, i found that the first one is not supposed to be uh, exactly 3.38 so it's supposed to be 3.37 uh, 998 so 37998 so just let me write it down properly so 3.3 3, uh, 3 here right then uh, the second one will be 3.3 3, uh, 7733 yeah and then after that I'm going to continue on by getting my uh, x3 so uh, let me see whether I got it uh, correct so my x3 is there okay so from here let me check all right so from here i should be able to get um hold on so let me check the number there oops let me there's a delay sorry about that okay uh, it failed to respond now. Okay, okay, it's going, it's coming back. Hmm. Okay, what happened here? Mm -hmm. Let me check properly. Uh, if I got it correctly, this supposed to be this. Uh, all right, this one. This does does not fit in nicely. Yep, correct. So. So let me try some more okay cool now it's okay All right so uh, after I got my uh, 3.37733 so the next one uh, will be uh, 3.37 uh, 37735 there and then if you continue on to get your uh, fourth one uh, the number would saturate at uh, this value here that is when we know that uh, we have reached the um, uh, the root and then we are going to leave the final answer for the root so the uh, solution or the root itself is uh, x equal to we have to leave it to the nearest three decimal places uh, that will give me 3.3 uh, seven, seven. so three decimal places there All right so I hope that is clear. Okay. Now we are going to go to the uh, last one now. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So the last uh, question, we need to deduce the root of these uh, equations here. Okay. Now, if you notice that uh, these equations and the original equations look uh, very similar. So here. We can actually let, uh, you can actually let for number 4 here. Uh, you can let your x equal to exponential y minus 1. Okay, all right. So from here, uh, we, we found that y is actually ln x plus 1, uh, which is actually the same. Uh, it's actually the same equations, all right? And then uh, we have already found the solutions to number 1. So solutions to equations number one is uh, x equal to 3.377 uh, in this case. So therefore, 
uh, therefore in this case uh, the root the roots for this which is the y in this case you can see the the root for this equation refer uh, to the value of y because we are solving for y here uh, therefore uh, because the roots for the first equation is this therefore the solutions y in this case will be ln 3.377 plus 1 here which is actually ln uh, 4.377 Okay, so if you use the uh, calculator to um, evaluate this, so let me uh, give you a try. So there will be a long, okay, so long, this number, for instance, okay, <laughs> it does not allow me to uh, click in. So that is 4.37735. If I were to use a, a more accurate uh, numbers there, okay, so therefore uh, the solutions to these uh, equations would be one point four uh, eight if you were to leave it to uh, two decimal places uh, based on the uh, requirement of the questions there, right? So that conclude um, the solutions to all the four parts to this question nine here, right? I hope uh, you're okay with this. I'm going to move on to the next one shortly. All right, let's look at uh, question ten here. Uh, we have two points uh, A and B have position vector given by uh, such. Now the line has the equations R equal to 2i plus j plus mk uh, plus mu i minus 2j minus 4k, where m is the is a constant here. Now given that the line L, uh, the line L intersects the line passing through AB, find the value of uh, m here. Okay, now I have uh, actually uh, created a, a sort of a, a small simulation here just to show it to you. So the green line is actually a line that passes through the point A and B. So here we are interested to see uh, what would be the, uh, the value for M uh, when the line, the green line, actually intersect with the line L, which is the red one. Okay, now let me show you from a, a different perspective here. So that you can see that you can see that from this perspective, it looks as if they are intersecting. They are not actually, if you look properly. Okay. So therefore, we can change the value of m, for instance. So if I swipe it uh, to negative value, it would uh, sort of separate itself uh, further. So maybe if I, I get the value of m more positive, and then all right. So it seems like now is intersecting at m equal to three. Uh, whether is actually intersecting. Uh, let us rotate and see. Okay, from this view, this view, yes, they are actually intersecting. So therefore, yes, well done. Uh, I'm quite lucky. Uh, I indirectly have located the value for m uh, when both lines uh, intersect. Okay, but how are we going to work it out uh, algebraically? Uh, that is more important, right? Now I'm going to show it to you. Okay, now to, to do that, first of all, we have to form um, the line equations that pass through A and B. There. Okay, so we can look at the first questions here. Uh, we're going to work out the line equations that pass through A and B. So first of all, uh, we have to work out the uh, uh, vector. Okay, so the uh, relative vector between uh, A and B, so the, or the vector AB. Now AB is given by, we have 3, 1, 1, subtract with 1, negative 2, a 2 here. Okay, so that would give me a 2, a 3, a 3 here, and then a negative 1. Okay, now that would be the vector uh, AB here. Therefore, the line uh, passes through A and B uh, will be given by this. Okay, so I'm going to write it down here. Um, that will be okay. Now, because it passes through A and B, you can uh, put any uh, point as a point where the line actually passes through, uh, maybe A or B or any other point uh, in between actually. So here I will choose the standard one A. So one negative two two. Uh, you can choose B here if you like. And then uh, after that, we have to use a parameter and then uh, the directions of the line. So the direction of the line is given by uh, vector AB. Okay, so there you have it. 
Now that will be the line equation that passes through AB. So I'll write down AB here. It will be easier. Now for both of the lines to intersect, uh, therefore, uh, both of these uh, line equations must uh, be the same. So this one must be the same as uh, this line equation here. Okay, now as usual, by comparing uh, each uh, row uh, values, so we end up uh, somewhere here. I'm going to write it down here, here. So this is 1 plus 2 lambda is equal to 2 plus uh, mu. Okay, uh, by simplifying that, uh, we would be able to uh, arrive to this um, equation equal to 1. So that might be our first equation. And then uh, after that, okay, uh, after that we have the second one, negative 2 plus 3 lambda uh, is equal to 1 minus 2 mu there. Right. <clears throat> okay, so the same thing here, we will have uh, 3 lambda plus 2 mu is equal to uh, 3 here. So that will be our second equation. All right. Now of course uh, at this point we can, we can solve the uh, lambda uh, quite quite easily. For instance, I'm going to take 2 multiplied by 1 and then add them up with equations number 2. So that will be uh, 7 lambda. Um, 7 lambda would be uh, 2, 2 with uh, 5 there. So therefore, the lambda would be 5 over 7. Okay, so just let me check properly whether I got it correct. Uh, 4, 7, 2, done, 2 with 5. Yep, correct. <clears throat> so there you have it, our lambda. And then uh, from equation number 1, we will be able to obtain the uh, constant, uh, sorry, the variable uh, mu also, which is um, which is actually uh, 3 over 7, uh, if you uh, solve it. Okay, so just let me check properly. It's 10 over, yep, correct. And then lastly, uh, we are going to compare the uh, last row here. So the last row will give us uh, 3 minus lambda is equal to m uh, minus 4 mu here. Okay. And then uh, therefore, the value for m must be the same as uh, 2 plus 4 mu uh, minus lambda, knowing all the value that we have already obtained. So we're going to put that in. So the mu itself is uh, this, so that will be a 12 over 7 uh, minus of lambda 5 over 7. All right, and then uh, that, that is just nice. It's just uh, 1, so therefore m is actually equal to 3. And then I have already shown you in the previous simulation, yes, the exact value for m is actually 3 for the two lines uh, to intersect. All right, now I hope that uh, is clear. Right, now we're going to move on to the uh, next uh, question shortly. All right, so all you need to do is just substitute this value into uh, the equations number one. So this is what we have. Uh, our n is 14, 3, negative 5. And then the a is any point on the plane itself. Uh, now in this case, if I choose a as a reference point, and then uh, dot products with the uh, the normal to the plane and then there you have it so for the um, scalar product you should also refer to the video on this if you have forgotten so that is actually negative 14 uh, negative 6 and negative 10 there. so negative 20 negative uh, 30 so I have negative 30 there and then for this since XYZ is R so therefore I can write down as X plus 3Y minus 5z is equal to negative 30 and then if I rearrange it uh, properly it would be 5z equal to 30 and then uh, that will be my equations of the plane uh, that is parallel to the uh, directional vector 1 negative 2 negative 4 and then contain uh, both the points uh, a and b Right. Now I hope that is clear. I'm going to move on to question 11 shortly. Alright, let's look at the uh, questions uh, 11. Right. Now it's a complex uh, number question. 
Now, throughout these questions, the use of calculator is not permitted. All right. Now, A, the complex number Z and W satisfy the equation uh, given as such. Now, you need to solve these simultaneous equations and then uh, give your answer in the form of X plus I, Y, where the, both the X and Y are real. All right. Now, let's take a look at how to solve this. Uh, A. <coughs> okay. So, we have a Z. Now I need to uh, make a remark here also. So I square is actually equal to a negative one. So I hope that that is clear, right? <clears throat> and then uh, next we have uh, this is our first equation, and our second equation is here. Equal to one here. Now that will be our second equation, right? Now let's try to solve it. Uh, up to you how you want to uh, do this. Now. Take for instance, okay, I, I might want to uh, do it this way. For instance, I'm going to multiply this uh, to my equation number one. Okay, and then uh, thereafter, I'm going to subtract this with equations number two, for instance, to get rid of the uh, z. There. Right. <clears throat> so from here, I will get um, a 2w, okay, so 2w. Um, subtract off with the IW is equal to um, now that is actually the I is a 1 plus I okay minus of uh, a 1 so that is actually an I okay so from here we can uh, factorize this equal to this uh, therefore we can conclude our complex number um, w as the uh, of course uh, don't forget you have to uh, rationalize this okay so that will be 2 plus i okay so that will be a 4 or 5 and then uh, that will be um, let me see what do we have uh, x and y are real okay so x and y are real so in this case we have a negative 0 0.2 uh, plus 0 0.4 uh, I there, so where X and Y are real. <clears throat> so once we have obtained that, uh, we can use either one of these equations, for instance, uh, equations uh, number one. So Z is equal to I minus one plus I uh, W. So my W is um, is this. So therefore, this is uh, 0 0.2. Okay. So from here, uh, I will have negative 0 0.2, 0 0.4i, negative 0 0.2i, and then uh, lastly, I will have 0 0.4 here. Okay. So from here, I will have a negative 0 0.6, okay, positive 0 0.6. Okay. And then uh, lastly, this is um, 0 0.2i. 0, 0 and 2i, yes, correct. So negative 0 and 2i, uh, negative 0 and 2i, so therefore that will be 0 0.8i. And then there you go, uh, that is the complex number z and w by solving these uh, two complex um, simultaneous equations. Right now, I'm going to move on to the next questions um, shortly. All right, questions 11b uh, here. Now, uh, the complex number u and v are given by um, such. Now, in an argon diagram, uh, u and v are represented by point A and B, as uh, shown here. You can see that. Now, a third point C, a third point C lie in the first quadrant. So, this is in the first quadrant, and is uh, such that uh, BC, uh, BC is sort of twice the magnitude of AB and then the angle of ABC is uh, 90 degree so here I just try to make a remark oh, this angle is 90 degree right so next we're going to find the complex numbers uh, Z represented by uh, C here okay so we have no idea what this uh, complex number is so we will just label it as um, a plus IB, okay, for instance, okay, or in this case, it's in the form of uh, X plus IY, then, okay, 
I might want to change it uh, based on the exam requirement. So that would be x plus i y there. Okay. All right. Now we are ready. So the um, the complex number z basically can be uh, written using um, Euler's form. I would say Euler's form will be the easiest uh, to be used here. Uh, or although Cartesian form, um, Cartesian format or rectangular form uh, can be used. So, but I prefer to use a uh, Euler uh, form by getting the magnitude of uh, BC. So all we need to do is uh, get the magnitude of BC, and then E, I, uh, together with the argument of the um, complex number. So the argument that we are talking about is actually somewhere here. So I'm going to draw a straight line, horizontal straight line here. So this is the argument that we are talking about. All right. Now we know that this is 90 degree here. Uh, we should be able to get the argument for uh, vector AB uh, quite easily. And then um, furthermore, this can be written as uh, twice the magnitude of AB here because this is given uh, as such. And then, uh, furthermore, theta is actually 90 degree uh, minus of alpha. Right. <clears throat> so I hope that will be uh, useful at this point. All right. Now, first of all, let's start by getting the magnitude of AB. So magnitude of AB is quite, uh, quite simple. All you need to do is um, take the difference between the complex number uh, in this case, I put down a magnitude here because we're only interested in the uh, distance. So take for instance, um, in this case, it will be negative 2 uh, plus 2 third 3 minus 2i there. So we're going to work out uh, the magnitude itself. So the magnitude will be, um, in this case, a 4. Okay, uh, we have a, a 4. Um, and then now uh, we have a three. All right, we have a one, and then we have um, two third three here. All right, uh, I think that is, that will be correct. Uh, now don't forget that is a square root. So there's a square root of that. And then now uh, from here, uh, we should be able to take out the the, the two here. So that will be a one. Uh, plus uh, 3 plus 1 minus 2 third 3 square root and then uh, finally we can uh, simplify this as 5 um, 5 this is 5 yeah correct so 5 third 5 so therefore there will be 5 third 3 here uh, square root all right <coughs> so I hope uh, that is uh, clear at this point, so the x and y um, in its um, exact form. Yeah. All right. Now we have already found the uh, magnitude uh, for our complex number C. Right. So it has a mag magnitude uh, given by uh, this value here. So I hope you are clear with this. Uh, twice of this uh, magnitude, right, which is here. Now, next we're going to figure out the uh, argument. Uh, now we can take this as the uh, reference uh, for the argument, all right? <clears throat> so first of all, the argument for uh, B A. In this case, I write down B A. The argument for B A. Okay. Even though uh, just now I, I I was taking the magnitude itself, but the actual um, complex number because this is u, this is v. So if you take uh, u minus v, uh, you are indirectly uh, referring to this complex number uh, ba here. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to work out this, uh, this particular angle here. Uh, therefore, the alpha based on the diagram uh, can be calculated as, okay, now that is just the uh, y value over the uh, x value. So here I'm not interested in the um, positive or negative value. So I'm only interested in the uh, the magnitude of the angle itself. So therefore, it should be the uh, tangent inverse of two third three uh, minus two divided by uh, two here. 
even though we know that in this quadrant tangent is supposed to be uh, negative but here I'm only interested in the uh, magnitude of the angle so therefore this is the same as um, set 3 um, minus 1 okay and then uh, from there we know that uh, the <coughs> the the theta theta is actually uh, 90 degree minus uh, alpha which is the same as 90 degree uh, minus of tangent inverse all right uh, therefore we are we are almost there okay so all we need to do now is um, to write down the uh, complete uh, form of this uh, complex number uh, C there. So C uh, is given by this uh, complex number Z, uh, which is actually uh, 4 times 5 minus 2 set 3. Okay, uh, exponential i, uh, then the theta is actually uh, minus this. Okay, and then there you have it. Um, now, of course, this is in uh, Euler's form. Uh, if you like to convert it to the Cartesian form, uh, then that will be uh, this magnitude here. Uh, they want the x and y in its uh, exact form. Okay, so let me erase this. Uh, I'll try to write it down at the side here because it's going to be a long working here. So what happens is that we will have 4, okay so this exponential uh, can be written as cosine uh, pi over 2 minus tangent inverse plus i sine uh, pi over 2 minus uh, tangent inverse so 3 minus 1 here okay that's how it look like <coughs> okay now we, we know that um, oh yeah by the way I forgot to include this curly bracket here okay now next I'm going to write it down over here uh, so from here uh, cosine is the same as sine uh, sine is equal to uh, cosine so the z is 4 phi minus this uh, sine tangent inverse set 3 minus 1 okay this is how it look like plus uh, i cos uh, it become a cos tangent inverse set 3 minus 1 all right so that's how it look like uh, now bear in mind is uh, bracketed okay so from here, oh yeah, I forgot the uh, square root here. Okay, I think it's not very clear. Let me rewrite that or else our letter is very hard for you to read. So the z that we are having is a 4, 5 minus 2, set 3. Okay, uh, multiply by sine. Uh, tangent inverse set 3 minus 1 uh, plus i i cos um, tangent inverse okay and then there you have it that's the uh, complex number uh, of course we are not going to leave the answer like this um, we know that uh, the uh, the alpha is uh, okay so the tangent uh, inverse so from here we can actually uh, use a uh, right angle triangle uh, methods so I'm going to draw a right angle angle uh, right angle triangle um, to ease us with this uh, simplification um, now we, we know that uh, for instance uh, this this angle here okay that is actually um, set 3 minus 1 uh, over 1 okay so therefore this uh, part here will be uh, let me see so there's a 3 uh, 4 5 
5, so 5 minus 2, so 3. Okay, square root. All right. So therefore, uh, the whole expression here, the z, uh, can be simplified as, so z can be written as 4, 5, so 3 here. Another set that you may not like uh, in this case. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now from here, the sign. Uh, the sign is actually, all right, I think I write down below here. It's very messy at this point. So the Z is written as 4, 5 minus 2, set 3. Another set 3 here. And then the sign becomes set 3 minus 1 over 5 minus 2, set 3 another set 3 here uh, plus the i cos so uh, i cos is actually 1 over 5 minus 2 set 3 another set 3 here all right <clears throat> so from here uh, we can simplify this uh, all together so therefore uh, the z will become the uh, 4 set 3 minus 1 uh, plus uh, 4i. Alright, and then there you have it. Uh, that will be the complex number that are re that is represented by C. Alright, now if you have other suggestions, uh, do write, uh, do post your comment on this. Alright, thank you very much uh, for watching, and then uh, uh, I'll show you the next uh, question shortly. Alright, let's look at the uh, last uh, questions uh, for this uh, complete uh, paper 3. Uh, L level mathematics, right? <clears throat> okay, now let fx equal to uh, this rational uh, function I express uh, fx in uh, its partial fractions form and then uh, hence uh, show that the integrations can be uh, solved uh, in this way, right? So uh, firstly, uh, the first step is to check whether this is an improper or proper fraction. So we notice that the degree um, for the denominator is larger than the degree of the numerator. Uh, therefore, this is a, a proper fraction. So since it is proper fraction, um, we can actually uh, write this fx. So first question here uh, in this form. So we can actually write uh, write its uh, partial fractions form in this way. Now, since there is a repeated um, factor, so that is the partial fraction form plus a C 3x plus 2. Yeah. <clears throat> so I hope that is clear. And then after that, uh, all you need to do is just uh, uh, recombine this. So if you were to combine this, uh, we will get uh, AX 3x plus 2. Uh, plus uh, b 3x plus 2 uh, plus a uh, cx squared and then uh, the whole thing is divided by uh, x squared 3x plus 2 here right <clears throat> okay now bear in mind uh, fx is also given by uh, 3x squared divided by uh, x squared 3x plus 2 here now, by uh, using comparison method, so therefore we can uh, write this one down. So we can simplify this as okay. So you can see that. All right. Uh, now there are many ways to uh, to actually do this. Okay, maybe uh, one. A uh, quick way is by collecting all the like terms. So here we have, uh, what are we having here? We have uh, 3a plus a c uh, x squared. So the like term can be uh, can be collected. So from the second one, we have uh, 2ax. Uh, here we have 2a uh, plus 3b uh, x. And then finally, we have uh, one constant, which is uh, 2b, I believe. Okay, so that's the only constant. All right. Now, true com comparison, uh, the constant and the coefficients of uh, x and x squared. So we found that the uh, b must be negative uh, 2. Okay. <clears throat> now, once we have found that, uh, we know that 
2a plus 3b is actually equal to a 0. Uh, therefore, uh, we can uh, we can find uh, a in this case. Uh, so the uh, the a in this case will be uh, 3. Uh, just let me check if I got it uh, correctly. Uh, 6, uh, negative 6, 0. Yeah, correct. So a is 3, b is uh, negative 2. And then lastly, uh, we know that 3a plus c must be equal to the coefficient of x squared here. Uh, knowing that a is uh, uh, 3, so therefore uh, c um, must be a negative 6 there. <coughs> so negative 6, 3. All right. And then uh, once we have uh, completed all this, uh, we can actually uh, conclude this uh, fx in its uh, partial fraction form. So the a is equal to 3, uh, the b is a negative 2, and then uh, finally the c is uh, negative 6, 3x plus a 2. Alright, now we are done. All right. Okay. Now, lastly, okay. Lastly, uh, for uh, second question, we are going to integrate uh, this fx uh, using uh, because they are uh, stating hands. Um, now, the chicken and egg theory. So, therefore, we have to make use of our previous result here. So, number two. Uh, let me see whether I can complete it here. Uh, the integration of uh, fx with respect to uh, x here can be written as uh, 3x minus 2x squared uh, minus 6 3x plus 2 with respect to here. So 1 and 2. <clears throat> okay, now that shouldn't be a problem here. Uh, you should be able to get uh, 3 ln x. Okay. And then uh, this one here will be, um, let me see, is a negative 1. So that will be a 2 over x. And then uh, finally, you have the um, uh, 2, 2 ln 3x plus 2. And then uh, finally, we're going to include its uh, upper boundary and lower boundary. There. So from here, we should be able to uh, get. Let me see what we have here. Uh, we have uh, 3 ln, okay, I'm going to write that down, 3 ln 2 uh, plus 1 uh, minus off with uh, 6, uh, 8. Okay, so the first result, we have to subtract off with a 1. So ln 1 is a 0. So we have a 2 here. And then uh, that is a 1, that is a 5. So 2 ln 5. That will be our second result. <clears throat> okay, so I hope that is clear. And then finally, we're going to uh, okay. simplify that. Okay, so if you were to simplify that, we will get uh, what we have here negative 1. Yep, correct. So negative 1. Uh, we have that um, uh, 8. Okay, so 8 divided by, um, 8 divided by 64, 1 over 8. So we have negative 1, uh, ln 1 over 8, okay, so there's 64, oh, there's uh, 8, and then after that, uh, we have plus uh, ln 25. Okay, so from here, uh, they want uh, the answer to be in this form here. So therefore, we're going to combine uh, these two together. Uh, we can say that their final answer is 25 over 8 uh, minus 1. And then therefore, we managed to prove this uh, integration, definite integration. Right? I hope that's clear. Uh, we're going to, uh, okay, we have already reached the last uh, questions for today. All right? Now, if you like what you are looking at, uh, don't forget to click the subscription button and then uh, the notification bell uh, so that you can receive the latest uh, video that I will be. Uh, uploading in the future, right? Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys again.